Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another study going through the book, The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. Today, we are going to continue where we left off, going through the book, The Pilgrim's Progress. And in this book, we will get lessons for those who are soul winners and lessons for those who are newly coming into the faith, lessons for new saints, new believers. This is the purpose of going in depth with this book because there's many precious truths found in this book, but we have to dig deep to find them and bring them to surface. So with that, before we go into this study of the book, The Pilgrim's Progress, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Loving Father in heaven, I so thank you indeed for letting us live to see another day. As we are about to go into this study, going through the Pilgrim's Progress, I pray that the Holy Spirit will be with us, that the truths found in this book will be edifying to us as we look at the scriptures and see the pathway for the Christian. For it is your desire that not one of us will be lost, so I pray that what we learn, we will take it to heart and will help us to be have stronger faith and we'll be better Christians in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining. And we're going to continue where we left off. In the first study, after we did the intro about John Bunyan, we saw that Christian left. He left the city of destruction. From reading the book, which represented the Bible, he knew that his city was going to be destroyed. He witnessed to his wife and his family, but they decided to stay, so he left by himself. However, the evangelist gave him a scroll and told him to flee to the wicked gate. That's where he needs to go, to the wicked gate. So we're going to pick up right there and we're going to focus in today, especially on two of the individuals who come out to meet Mr. Christian when he leaves. And these individuals are obstinate and pliable, obstinate and pliable. They come to meet Christian. So, if you have your book, you can follow along. So, he leaves now. And it says that when he left, the Christians also came out to see him run. Now, here's what happened when he leaves the city of destruction. Now, this would represent from a person leaving the world and now a follower of Christ. So, when he left, what happened? Some mocked him. Some threatened him. Some cried for him to return. So this is some of the same things that can take place or have taken place in your life when you started following Christ. Some individuals might have mocked you. And unbeknownst to them that these individuals were being used by the enemy for the purpose of getting you to go back to the life of sin, back to the world. So now... Some individuals mocked him, making fun of the Christian. Others cried for him to return. Why are you going to do that? And so what they do many times is individuals paint the world and they focus in on the joys, that the happiness that you had. However, it's many times associated with sin. So they will come to the individual. Remember when we did this? And we did this and we went to the movies here or when we was going out here and the clubs and the party time and bring reminiscing upon these times where you may have might have some positive attachment with them as a method to draw you back into the world. These are some of the methods that are being used to get Christians to come back. And these are some of the same methods that are used when individuals start following Jesus Christ. Some will mock you, make fun of you. Some will say, come back, come back. This is what you're going to miss out. Remember these times. And then others will just leave you alone and just cut you off. Now, when Christian leaves the city of destruction, there were two individuals that were resolved to take him by force. Notice that, by force. They're going to get him to come back. You must come back. To the city of destruction with us. The name of the one was obstinate. The name of the other was pliable. Okay. Obstinate and pliable. Obstinate and pliable. 
two separate individuals and they have two different methods of ways to get him to come back but they're different now we're gonna learn that pliable actually doesn't say that he wants to come back to go back to the city pliable actually says i'm gonna go with you because his name rightly suits him now when you study this book the pilgrim's progress you'll notice that the individuals in the book their names are associated with their character what they are like and the things that they will say so the name is attached to how they are and the things that they will say so now one individual is called obstinate so if you think of someone is obstinate what does that come to your mind of someone being obstinate okay a person who is obstinate is unwilling to change a person who is obstinate says this is it I'm not gonna change I'm not gonna argue with you this is how it has to be my way or the highway obstinate rebellious all right my way and that's it okay so this is obstinate he is one of the two which come out to get Christian now the second one is pliable pliable now when you hear the word pliable what comes to your mind pliable something that is easy bendable someone who will go this way and go that way blowing with the wind whatever is the in thing I'm gonna go with this this sounds good I'm with you and then he'll just go left and right you know blown away so this represents pliable someone who is easily influenced easily bent one way or the other way and we're gonna notice that mr. pliable he wants a gospel that makes him happy and suits him and we're gonna go more deeper into that so these are the two individuals Mr. Obstinate and Mr. Pliable. They go out to meet Christian. They go out to meet Christian. Now when we're studying this book, we're going to see maybe that you in yourself might have associated with one of these two characters. But by the grace of God, we can surrender and learn from these characters in the book. So let's see what takes place. Obstinate and Pliable. So Christian left and they ran after him. Now they catch up with Christian. And it says here, Then said the man, which is speaking about Christian, he's referred to still as the man, Neighbor, wherefore are you come? Here's what they say. To persuade you to go back with us. But he said, that can by no means be. Ye dwell in the city of destruction. I see it to be so, and dying there, sooner or later you will sink lower than the grave into a place that burns with fire and brimstone. Be content, good neighbors, and go along with me. So notice now, when Christian speaks to them, referred to here as the man, he tells them, I cannot go back because the city is going to be destroyed with fire and brimstone. So you see from early out, Christian has been reading his Bible. Christian understands that those who do not accept Christ as their Savior, the wages of sin is death. And those who have not surrendered to Christ and are lost will be lost. In the lake of fire now we we all know that this fire does not burn on forever it just burns until it has to do with the amount of sins that the person has and they are judged by their works so we know that already but here even Christian already knows that the wages of sin of death and those who are lost will be after faith, fire, and brimstone. Now the third angel's message says, in Revelation 14, verse 10, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelation 14, verse 10, the third angel's message. 
So here we see he already is warning obstinate and pliable. You cannot, I cannot go back because in the city of destruction, as it's rightly named, it's going to be destroyed with fire and brimstone. He understands the fate of the wicked who does not repent. He understands it. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. They have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. The third angel's message. He understands about the fire and brimstone. So he says, I cannot go back. So praise God. Christian is going forward and he's witnessing to them to say, come along with me. Come along with me. Now here it says obstinate. Rightly named obstinate. What? And leave our friends and comforts behind us. Leave our friends and comforts behind us. So this is what obstinate says. This is one of the reasons why he will not follow Christian. Why he will not be a Christian. If I become a Christian, I will have to leave my friends and comforts behind. The Satan likes to paint this world in such a way he blinds mankind's eyes to sin. So they think that the way in which they're doing a life apart from Christ, that there is joy there, but they, everyone has a hole in their heart that only Christ can fill. God has set eternity in their hearts, and without Christ, they may be happy for a time, but the Bible says it's only for, they have pleasures only for what? A season. And then they're sad again. Then they're depressed again. Then they, that's why many people have to turn to different drugs. They turn to smoking. They to, turn to drinking. They turn to all these other things because their life is empty and only Christ can fill that void. They don't have true happiness because the Bible says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. Great peace have they that love thy law and nothing shall offend thee. They have peace, they have joy, joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Therefore, if you're not a follower of Christ, you do not have true joy. It's just a little worldly joy, which is not joy at all. So, this is obstinate reason why he's not going to follow. If I follow that, my friends are going to, I can't have the same friends, and my comforts behind. But remember, what did Christian just share with them? The city is going to be destroyed. And this earth is also going to be destroyed. And when Christ comes, destruction. This world will be facing in total destruction. This is what happens when Christ comes again. But, that's what Absalom has said. Now, here's what's very interesting. It says, Yes, what said obstinate and leave our friends and comforts behind us? Here's his response. Yes, said Christian. Now here is very, very, very significant. That's why I said when you read Pilgrim's Progress, you got to read slowly and deeply. Before this point, he was always referred to as the man, the man, the man. Now he gets a name change. And just like in the Bible, when a person has a name change, we have a character change, and it has to do with their state in Christ. So remember, Jacob was a deceiver. He wrestled with Christ. His name is changed to Israel. And we see Abram changed to Abraham, the different name change. So here, the man, now it says, yes, said Christian, for that was his name. Now, why is it at that point that his name, it says, yes, said Christian, for that was his name. Listen what it says. Because that all which, all which, all you shall forsake, because all which you shall forsake is not worthy to be compared with a little of that I am seeking to enjoy. And if you go along with me and hold it, you shall fear as I myself. So Christian is going forward, he's forsaking the world, and he's witnessing to obstinate, and here now it says, yes, said Christian, because he has forsaken the world.
And it also says here, later on, because I have laid my hand to the plow. Now let's go to that verse, which is quoted here. Luke 9, verse 62. Let's go to Luke. Luke 9. Yes, verse 62. Now let's get the context here in Luke 9. In 58, Jesus has said, Foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That was Jesus speaking to Judas here. And he said, Unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, That the dead bury their dead, but go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. No man putting his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Now this is what Christian has done. He decided to leave. He had, he's left. And individuals are coming to get him, to go back. But Christian says, that can by no means be. I am not going back. So when the Christian has forsaken the world, here we see, now he gets that name changed. Remember, he surrendered his life to Christ. Self has died. The world is behind him. He's going forward. And now, in the book, his name is referred to as Christian. Very significant. So this goes for us. We have to completely forsake the world to be 100% Christ. No man can serve two masters. So if you're holding on to the world with one hand, you are all still on Satan's side. But when you forsake the world, now Christ has you completely and he can work with you. These are the lessons we are learning. And this is what is teaching us here. So now, obstinate has been talking. Obstinate has been talking. Now, Christian also, there's verses quoted here. We're going to look at some of these verses because these are some of the verses that John Bunyan brings out when he is speaking with obstinate. And another verse is 2 Corinthians 4.18. Now, these verses are verses whereby we as Christians should keep and store in our mind. I am going forward. No matter what takes place, I am not going to leave Christ. I will not. I am following Christ to the end. We looked at Luke 6, 52. Now we're going to go forward. And let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 18. Well, let's actually start at 17. Here's another verse quoted beside the passage in the Pilgrim's Progress of this conversation with obstinate. The Bible says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, this is the eyes of faith, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. Temporal. Meaning temporary. The things that we see, all these things that many people put all their focus on in this world. Be it a fancy house, a new car, they want to get this top title at the job. That's all they focus on. However, we are mortal, meaning that we are subject to death. So all the things that you focus on upon this world must be secondary. Christ must be number one. Because guess what? We're mortal. The wages of sin is death. And if we do not serve Christ in our life and we die, we are dying a lost individual. All the things that Satan paints in this world to glamorize people, they are temporary. The things of God is eternal. God has eternity 
for the saints. They live forever. So these are some of the verses here quoted in John Bunyan's book to help us to stand fast in our connection with Christ. Not to go back. Let's look at another verse. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. All things work together for good. So if you're a Christian now, your mindset must be different. That if what is taking place, God still can work through it for good. Now, saying that, there are two different times of trials that will come. As a Christian, trials will come. Trials will come from the enemy, and sometimes God will allow trials. But then there are trials that you yourselves have brought upon yourselves by being disobedient to God in the first place. So you bring these trials upon yourself. Or it could be that just circumstances that God brings about allows to take place. Satan usually brings it. God allows it to happen to do what? Strengthen your character. Whichever of the two, if you're a Christian, God can still, God is still with you and he will help you to get through it because God gave his son Jesus Christ. And he is, desires that every human being on earth will be saved. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Romans 8.32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So when you look at Romans 8 verse 32, that is the verse to quote in your mind, if Satan comes with these temptations to say, remember when you were back in the world? Remember when you used to do this? Remember all the fun you had? Remember these verses that we're looking at. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things. Satan wants to give you death. Satan wants you to be lost. God wants to give you life more abundantly now and when he comes again he wants to give you eternal life to live forever. Don't fall for Satan's traps to deceive you. Don't fall for it. Now in the book of Luke Luke 15 is also quoted. Now in Luke 15 we have the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, the prodigal son. Lost sheep, lost coin, prodigal son. And if you remember in that parable of the lost sheep, I mean prodigal son, is the Bible says when he came to himself, he went back home. When he came to himself. That stupor, that blindness that Satan had cast upon him, when he saw that he wasted all his good on riotous living and he lost everything then in his mind he remembered about how it was with his father's house so therefore just always remember that it is better to be with God even if there's trials than to be without God and with Satan Satan is a cruel taskmaster he will make your life hard the way of transgressors is hard with Christ, there still will be trials because Satan will bring them and God also wants to make us stronger, have stronger faith. He will allow certain things to take place, but God is with you. Better be with God than be on Satan's side because Satan wants to destroy. Jesus is wanting to save you for eternity. Never forget that. So these were some of the verses that are going with this conversation. Now, after that, here's obstinate again. Notice, Bible's not talking. Here's obstinate. What are the things you seek since you leave all the world to find them? What are these things you seek? Christian says, I seek an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, and is laid up in heaven, 
and fast there to be stowed at the time appointed. Time appointed, second coming of Christ. On them that diligently seek it. Read it so, if you will, in my book. What a powerful witness. He just responds back to obstinance. And he says what he's seeking will not fade away. And it will be given to him at the time appointed. Like in the book of Job, I know my Redeemer lives. And even though flesh, even though worms destroy this body, with my own eyes I will see Christ coming again. Just as it says in Job. Here we know, Christian now, he has faith and he says he's seeking an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. Obstinate is not getting him to go back. It's not working for Christian. Praise God. And this is what we need. The, the words of the enemy, we must not let them sway us. We must respond back with the word of God. Word of God. Let's look at some more verses that is anchoring our faith. Okay, 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 4. 1 Peter 1 verse 4. The Bible reads, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven, for you. This is what Christian told obstinate, and there is the Bible verse. First Peter chapter one verse four. This is how he's responding. Responding with the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews Hebrews chapter eleven. Hebrews chapter eleven. The faith chapter. We're looking at verse 16. Verse 16. Let's actually start in verse 14. It says, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly if they had been mindful of that country, from whence they came out of, they might have opportunity to have returned. Just like with Christian. If he was mindful of the things in the city of destruction, he could have returned. Verse 18, Hebrews eleven eighteen, But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city, the new Jerusalem. Mount Zion, the new Jerusalem. God has prepared for them a city where the saints will live in. The new Jerusalem. Praise God. So Hebrews eleven sixteen. So here are the verses that he that Christian is giving to pliable I mean obstinate these are the verses now here comes obstinate response to what Christian just said tush said obstinate away with your book will you go back with us or no he doesn't want to hear it are you coming back to the city of destruction or not away with that book I don't want to hear about that book that book does not rule my life. Are you coming back with us or not? So here now, we're seeing that as Christian is responding calmly, quoting the scripture, and trying to witness to obstinate to come back, to follow him actually and go forward to the city, obstinate is getting more upset. Obstinate says, away with your book, will you go back with us or no? So we're talking about also lessons for soul winners and saints. So therefore, if you're witnessing to someone and a person that you're witnessing to is like obstinate, notice, you do not fight fire with fire. Obstinate is getting more upset. Away with your book and you're going to see what else obstinate says going further. But Christian remains calm, meek, but the word of God is what his response is. So therefore this teaches us when we are witnessing and notice obstinate came to him. He is going and sharing the truth with obstinate. Obstinate does not want to hear it but Christian is not getting upset. He's not getting angry. He's calmly giving an answer for the hope that is in him. And this is the text in First Peter that we must 
have in our minds. First Peter. Chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 1 Peter 3.15 So notice now, Christian is responding with meekness and fear. He's not getting angry. He's not, he's not cursing back at him. He's not um, deriding him, giving fire for fire. He's staying calm, and he's telling him the truth. Okay, these are lessons we need to learn. Lessons for saints and soul winners. Okay? Christian says, No, not I, said the other, because I have laid my hand to the plow. We spoke about that already. That was Luke 9.62. We went to that verse. Now, obstinate sees that Christian is not being swayed. He's not going back. So here's obstinate now. Obstinate says, Pliable, come then. Let us return again and go home without him. Praise God, Christian did not get swayed by the arguments of obstinate. Obstinate sees that he's not going back. So he says, Pliable, let's go back home. Let's go back home. Now remember now, Pliable's been quiet throughout all this. But Pliable has been hearing everything that Christian is saying to Obstinate because he's right beside him. So Pliable is listening, listening. And remember, he's Pliable. Isn't he convinced? Blows left and right. He's hearing all this. So now Pliable says to Obstinate, don't revile. What if what the good Christian says is true? The things he looks are better than ours. My heart inclines to go with our neighbor. So Pliable says, what he says sounds good. A place where throughout eternity being saved at last, a heavenly, this thing sounds good. Back in the city of destruction, they don't offer us this. Eternity, joy, and all that. So Pliable says, let us go with him. Now here's Obstinate. Like I said, Obstinate is getting more fired up. Obstinate response to what Pliable says is, What? More fools still? So look, now he calls Pliable a fool. And of course, plural, he's calling Christian a fool. Be ruled by me and go back. Be ruled by me. Listen to me. I am obstinate. Be ruled by me and go back. Who knows whether such a brain sick fellow will leave you? Now you see he's gone to insults. He called Christian a fool. And then now he also called him a brain sick fellow. So you see, Satan, he has that spirit of Satan. He's getting fired up and he's insulting Christian. Fools, brain sick fellow. He tells Pliable, go back and be wise. So now, here's how Christian is smart. This is John Bunyan's genius here. He sees that obstinate is obvious, going to go back. Obstinate will not go with him. Pliable, now because he's pliable, he'll go wherever it sounds good. Pliable says, well, I want to cast in my lot with Christian. So now Christian now is focusing on pliable. So here Christian now. Come with me, neighbor pliable. There are such things to be had which I spoke of and many more. Glories beside. If you believe not what I say... Just read it in my book. Read it in the Bible. And for the truth of what is expressed therein, behold, all is confirmed by the blood of him that made it, as Jesus died on the cross. All of it is confirmed. He's telling Pliable, come with me. So here's Pliable. Well, neighbor obstinate, I begin to come to a point I intend to go along with the good man and cast in my lot with him. So he's going to follow with Christian. But remember, his name is Pliable. Let us be going. Now, Obstinate says, I will go back to my place, said Obstinate. I will be no companion of such misled, finesse, fantastical fellows. Once again, 
another name thrown at Christian. A fool, he is brain sick fellow, and he says misled fantastical fellows. So this is why when we're studying here, sharing the truth with individuals can, with some people can be as putting fire to a flame and they're getting more and more agitated. And we see that is the case with Christian. But the Bible says we should not cast pearls before the swine. If an individual is mocking the truth, want nothing to do with the truth, these are individuals with, if they're coming out insulting, don't go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because they are determined. These individuals, you go, you go in your closet and you pray for these individuals that the Lord will work upon their hearts and they will surrender to God. But while they're in that state, you see Satan, is that spirit of Satan is there. That anger, that animosity. Don't war with people. Don't war with people. It's just going to mess you up. So now, Pliable decides to go with Christian. So Pliable says, which, where, where do we go? Where do we go? And Christian tells him that evangelists told him where they must go. It's going to what's called the, the wicked gate is where they're going to. So now he has a travel companion named Pliable. Now I saw in my dream that when Obstinate was gone back, Christian and Pliable started talking. And they began to have a discourse. So now Christian is talking to Pliable. So Pliable wants to get more information. So he says, tell me further what are the things are, how to be enjoyed, whether we are going. Now notice what Pliable is concerned about. He heard about the blessings, let's say the reward of the saints, eternity, you know, you'll live forever. He heard about the things that God has in store for the saints, for them that love God. So Pliable wants to know more about how to be enjoyed. What are the things that we're going to enjoy? This is all that's on Pliable's mind. Not repentance, not the cross, not surrender. What is to be gained by following Christ? Now, Christian tells him, But since you are desirous, I will read of them in my book. He's going to read to Bible the things that are in the Bible of what God has in store for the saints. Because Christian said, Yes, verily, for it was made by him that cannot lie. Now that's Titus 1-2, which says God cannot lie. So here is a verse whereby Christians' faith is anchored upon. And it should be for us. God cannot lie. God is the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God cannot lie. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So since God cannot lie... This is what God said in the Bible is for the saints. Therefore, it's a fact. This is the reward of the saints. So Christian has faith in the word of God and he believes the word of God because God cannot lie. So all of these are texts to keep in our mind. When we're tempted, God cannot lie. God is faithful. God is faithful. So he starts to tell pliable what they will enjoy. And this is also a method whereby can warm a person's heart and can be an opening wedge to get them to make a total surrender. God gives us glimpse, especially in the book of Isaiah, Revelation 21, Revelation 22, about the reward of the saints. And it's there also to encourage us to press on that as we see this world getting more and more wicked, more and more evil, God has something better in store. And God wants us to focus upon the rewards. All right, Focus upon heaven. And let this be before us as this world gets darker and darker. We are pilgrims on this earth. This world is not our home. So Christian tells him there's an endless kingdom to be inhabited. He says, 
pliable now. What else? There are crowns of glory to be given us and garments that will make us shine like the sun in the firmament. Garments to make us shine like the sun in the firmament. This is excellent. And what else? You see? Pliable wants to know, what are the rewards? What else? What else do we get? There shall be no more crying, nor sorrow, for he that is owner of the place will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Wipe away all tears. Now let's look at the verse for that. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21, because this is the verse. Revelation chapter 21, when John sees the holy city coming down. Verse 3 says, And I heard a voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Praise God. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Praise God. Revelation 21 verse 3 and 4. So this is what he's sharing with Pliable. And these are truths that we must keep always in our minds. That as sadness that we hear the horrors taking place in this earth. Death and horrible evil taking place. There's coming a day when God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. No more death. No more sorrow. No more pain. This is coming. This is coming. This is coming for the saints. Now, another verse which he also gives, just as Revelation says that, in the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8, the Bible reads, He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. Same thing Revelation says. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. Praise God. Praise God. So this is what he's sharing with Pliable. Now, remember, Pliable's, he's interested now. What else? On what company shall we have there? And Christian tells him there's going to be seraphims, there's going to be cherubims. He speaks about the 24 elders. He speaks about all the glories that will be in heaven will be have immortality and it's going to be glorious the hearing of this is enough to ravage one's heart but are these things to be enjoyed how shall we get to be sharers thereof how am i going to get this now christian is going back and forth with pliable he says that the book tells us how we'll get it the substance of which is if we be truly willing to have it, he will bestow it upon us freely. Praise God. Well, my good companion, glad am I to hear of these things. Come on, let us mend our pace. So now, he's hearing of the glories, the reward of the saints. He's getting, he's smiling. I want that, I want that, I want that. So he says, hurry up, let's go, let's go. Because remember, he started the journey. And the journey is to go to the celestial city. But they're just starting out. So Christian is telling him what will be the rewards. Now, Pliable wants to get there as fast as possible. I want to get these rewards. Now, here's Christian's response. Because when he says, hurry up, let's go. I cannot go as fast as I would by reason of this burden that is upon my back. Now, remember, Christian... This is what started him in the first place. By reading the book, a burden came upon his back. Now this burden represented guilt, his sin, crushing him out. It's upon his back. And with the burden, he understanding the city is going to be destroyed, he leaves. Now, as you're going through Pilgrim's Progress, Christian wants to get rid of this burden because it's crushing him. He has this burden upon his back. Now, Mr. Pliable, who is following him, has no burden. Here's a picture. He has a burden on his back. But remember, Pliable does not 
have a burden. He just hears the truth and from Christian and he wants to follow. But remember, when Christian, he read in the book, the burden came on, it, on his back and then he was crying out to God. Christian has a burden on his back. Pliable does not have a burden on his back. He has not seen his sin. He has not felt conviction of sin, nor guilt. He has no burden. He's walking calmly, no guilt. Christian says, I cannot go as fast as I would by reading of this burden on my back. So now, he does not have the burden, pliable. Now I saw in my dream that just as they ended this talk, they drew near a miry slough that was in the middle of the plain, and that being heedless, did both fall suddenly into the plain. They fall into this slough of this spawn, and they are sinking in this slough of the spawn. Now, remember, his name is Pliable. He says, let's go there. While they're walking, they fall into this slough. Now listen to Pliable. Then said Pliable, Ah, neighbor Christian, where are you now? Truly said Christian, I do not know. Now watch the change now. Pliable now. At that, Pliable began to be offended. Now notice, everything was fine and dandy. He's hearing about heaven. He's hearing about the glory. They fall into the slew of despond. Now look how pliable, just as he goes, easily go here or there. Now he becomes to be offended, and it says, and angrily. Now we're seeing now some of the characteristics of obstinate. He's getting angry. And then here's now pliable. Here are we changes, just when some trials come. Is this the happiness you have told me all this while of? If we have such ill speed at our first setting out, what way we expect twist this and our journey's end? So what does Pliable do? He makes a desperate struggle and gets out of the mire. Now, when he gets out, he gets out of the side of the slough of Despan, which was next to his house. And he went and Christian saw him no more. No more. He didn't see him anymore. When some trials came of in this slew of this spawn, Pliable became offended. He became angry. And he says, if this is what happens at the first setting out of our journey, what will happen in the future? And he shakes it off and he goes back home back to the city of destruction when the first trials come because he is pliable. He is pliable. Now, this represents individuals who follow Christ for the leaves, for the for the leaves and the fish, for the bread and the fishes. They follow Christ just when it is convenient. They follow Christ to feel what they can get, what they can get out of it. For the loaves and the fishes is what I meant to say. For the loaves and the fishes. They follow. But when any time some trials come, they run back to the world and they have nothing else to do with Christ. Pliable. Now, so he's so bad that he just leaves Christian alone in the slew of this pond. And he went back to his house. Now, Christian now, his eye is still on the prize indeed. So Christian, he has the burden on his back. His guilt, his sin is crushing him. He's sinking. But he sees the direction he wants to go in. And he doesn't turn himself towards back home. He turns himself in the direction of the wicked gates where the evangelist told him to go. That's the direction in which he is going. That's the direction in which he's going. And he gives a mighty pull and he struggles and someone comes to help him by the name of help. But what's very significant is 
we're talking about pliable because pliable just followed when things were good and then he became easily offended and when he became offended what did he do he went back home he went back home but praise God there was help for him by a person who comes by the name of help and he got out but let's look at the situation of Mr. Pliable here Pliable represents Christians that are stony ground hearers stony ground hearers now in Matthew 13 Matthew chapter 13 Actually, Matthew. Yes, Matthew 13, we have the parables there. And the parable of the sower, right? The sower sows seed, and there's different grounds. We see the wayside, stony ground, thorny ground, and then we have the good ground. Now, pliable represents the stony ground hearer. Now, let's see what the interpretation of it is. Speaking about the stony ground hearers. But he that receiveth the seed, which is the word of God, into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon, with joy receive it. Remember Pliable? He loved what he was hearing. Yet had he no root in himself, but in but endureth, but endureth for a while, just as Pliable did. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Remember Pliable was offended. Now Mark also speaks about this same parable. So let's go to the book of Mark. Okay, Mark chapter 4. Mark also speaks about the stony ground hearers. Now let's look at the stony ground hearers. Verse 16, these are they likewise which are sown by the stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Immediately. Just as what took place with Pliable. We saw that change immediately. Once he got stuck in the slew, immediately he was offended, and he went back. He went back home. Now, Matthew 24 also uses that word offended as well. Matthew 24 verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Look at Pliable. When Christian got stuck in the slew of this spawn, he didn't even go to help him. He just left and went back. He wasn't concerned. He betrayed Christian and just left him. Oh, you're, you're sinking? That's your problem. I'm out of here. He betrayed him and left him all alone in the slew of the spawn. So therefore, when you look at these characters very carefully, obstinate and pliable, obstinate and pliable, Obstinate can represent two classes of individuals. Individuals that are not Christians and individuals who want nothing to do with the Word of God and they're in the world and if you come at them with the Gospel they'll be very defensive and they may even insult you. An obstinate, I'm not going to change, I'm in the world and that's how I'm going to stay until I die. But some, you will even have some Christians that have some of the characteristics of obstinate. Meaning by they're in the church, but any truth whereby cuts at their known sin, 
they refuse to accept it. And when they hear cutting truths, especially present truth, they become offended at the preacher, offended at the word that they're hearing, and they get mad when they hear the truth. So that's the spirit of obstinate. When a person is hearing truth that has to do with their sin, they fight against it and they become angry. Uh, obstinate in the church and an obstinate in the world. Two different types of individuals having the same spirit that obstinate had, church and in the world. Now, regarding pliable now, pliable, remember, is the stony ground hearer. He hears it, sounds good, and he's just going along for the reward. His desire is to get to heaven to live for eternity. His desire is not, he does not have Christ in his heart. He's not converted, and he just wants the reward. Okay, the Bible says, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We want to go to heaven because we want to be with Jesus. We want to be saved because we want to see our Lord and Savior. It is Christ's love which draws us to follow him. Greater love have no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. We love him because he first loved us. So it's Christ's love which draws us to be a Christian to follow him. Not I'm going to follow Christ because I don't want to be destroyed in a lake of fire. That's not going to work. So, therefore, pliable, that's the pliable situation. But also, when you look at end time events, you can also see what's going to take place in the future. Individuals will also have that spirit of pliable. I'm going to read some of these statements in the spirit of prophecy. Um, which refers to regarding obstinate and some that has to do with pliable. So let's first obstinate and then we're going to just go straight pliable. Now this is taken from Testimony to the Church, volume 5, page 463. It says, The work which the church has failed to do in a time of peace and prosperity, she will have to do in a terrible crisis. Mark of the Beast crisis under the most discouraging, forbidding circumstances. And at that time, the superficial, conservative class, whose influence has steadily retarded the progress of the work, will renounce the faith. Like pliable, go back. They renounce the faith. Now, this conservative class, and you might have visited one of these type of churches, conservative class, Superficial conservative class. This is how we worship. We've worshipped this way for years. And this is how we're going to stay. Don't come in here telling us that we should be eating a certain way for heaven. We should not be dressing a certain way. Don't come in here telling us about um, reverence for the sanctuary. We've worshipped this way for years. We are conservative in the way in which we worship. And this is how we're going to stay. And we're not going to change. And if you come in here, starting preaching this, we're going to go to the pastor, we're going to have an elders meeting, and you will never have access to the pulpit again. No more of your preaching. You can go back where you came from. That's not welcome here. These are the type of things that take place. Obstinance. Individuals that don't want to advance with the light and want to stay in that lukewarm, Laodicean slumber asleep and do not want to change. They're obstinate. So here it says, you have this conservative class who is steadily retarding the work. And you also have that spirit of obstinate with the liberal class. The liberals who think that, well, I love Jesus. I love Jesus and he did it all for me and God is not concerned with how I dress, what I eat, what I do. He saved me and anything goes and I can just Take all my worldliness that I have, and just because I say I'm a follower of Christ, I accept Christ, I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven. Glory. Deceived the same way, and they're obstinate the same way. The conserv the liberal class, they don't want to hear anything about the commandments of God. They have this Nicolaitan 
teachings that they believe in, lasciviousness. We can live however we live, want to live. God is not concerned. And God will save us in our sins. That is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. That is liberalism. So we got abstinence that are liberals and we got abstinence that are conservative. Okay? We need to walk that narrow pathway. Okay? With present truth and continuing in the light following Jesus our Lord who is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary doing a work of judgment. Okay? And as that work of judgment is going on in heaven there also is a work to be done on the earth purifying our hearts from sin. Alright? So we have abstinence we see these characteristics all over the place. Now we're going to go about with the pliables. All right, pliables. Here we got evangelism, page 360. In the absence of persecution, they have drifted into our ranks men who appear sound and their Christianity unquestionable, like pliable. You know, I'm a Christian, but who, if persecution should arise, will go out from us? These are individuals who are just like pliable. They're pliables. They appear sound and their Christianity unquestionable. That's a Christian right there. But if persecution arises, they will go out from us. Just like pliable. Going back. Now, as his name is pliable, he's easily convinced. Listen to this statement. Testimonies to Ministers 112. When the shaking comes by the introduction of false theories... These surface readers anchored nowhere are like sifting sand. They slide into any position to suit the tenor of feelings of bitterness. This is pliable once again. And it says surface readers. Now remember, with pliable, pliable did not read the book. Pliable was listening to what Christian said. And then he wanted to receive the reward that Christian would receive the war reward of the saints. Pliable was not reading the book. Here now, we see Christians now who are not studying for themselves. These Christians are surface readers. They're not digging deep. Surface readers anchored nowhere are as what? Sifting sand. So individuals who are not studying the Bible, not studying the spirit of prophecy, this shaking that is taking place even now, what will happen to them? They will be sifted out, and these individuals will be lost. These individuals will be lost. Pliables in these last days. Pliables in these last days. Let's look at another statement. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 89. Here I've got another pliable. Prosperity multiplies a mass of professors. Nominal Christians, name only. Prosperity multiplies a mass of professors. Adversity purges them out of the church. Adversity does what? Purges them out of the church. That's what happens. Pliable. Any which way. Once that persecution, trials come, they're gone. They're gone. When the day comes when the law of God is made void and the church is sifted by fiery trials, here's trials again, that are to try all that live upon the earth, a great proportion of those who are supposed to be genuine will give heed to seducing spirits and turn here now, traitors and betray sacred trust. This is what they'll do. They'll become traitors. Your worst enemy is what will take place when these individuals go back and leave following Christ. Great Controversy, page 602. Let opp opposition arise. Let bigotry and intolerance again bear sway. Let persecution be kindled and the half-hearted and hypocritical will waver and yield the faith, but the true Christian will stand firm as a rock, as Christian did. His faith stronger, his hope brighter than in the days of his prosperity. In the days of his prosperity. So I'm going to close out here. And in the next study, going through Pilgrim's Progress, we'll pick it up. When hell comes, 
I'll go more in detail about that slew of despond because there's a lot there about what happens to Christians with that slew of despond. I want to emphasize that. But what we looked at today is obstinate and pliable. And by the grace of God, let us pray that the Holy Spirit will work in our hearts so that that spirit of obstinance and rebellion and that spirit of going wherever it sounds good of being pliable will be removed from us and we will be faithful unto the end. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you indeed for this book, The Pilgrim's Progress. We thank thee for the Bible. We thank thee for the spirit of prophecy. We thank thee that in these last days, truth is so easily accessible. Just with our phones, we can have apps. We can have the Bible right at our hands. We can have access to this book, The Pilgrim's Progress, for free. We can have Bible on our phone for free. And truth is easily accessible. We have the Ellen White app. We really have no excuse in these last days. I ask and pray that the devil will not be able to deceive us, to get us so caught up with the things of this world that we will not take time to spend for communion with thee, with Bible study and prayer. I pray that you will bless all who came on today and all who will watch this video, and that it will help to encourage the saints to be faithful unto the end. Lord, our desire is for us to be saved, and I pray that everyone who hears this message will indeed make their calling and election sure, so at that great and final day when you come in the clouds, we will meet you and say, This is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. Keep us faithful until the end. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Thank you for tuning in. Have a blessed week. And until next time, God bless you.